welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be making something called salt dough and we are going to be making a letter plaque similar to the one that I made. So you're going to need some flour, salt, and some water. Let's get started. So here we are. We are going to need to set up our area with a few things before we get started mixing our dough together. So what we are going to need is a cutting board or a piece of cardboard, placemat, cookie sheet, anything to keep all of your supplies in your area. You're going to need a bowl, spatula, some towel that you don't mind getting messy, salt, some water, gonna need flour, some measuring cups, some food dye if you decide that you would like to color some of your dough later, a little dish with some flour, a little dish of water, and some uh, clay tools. So what I have here are household items, a fork, a knife, a spoon, and a chopstick. I'm only gonna use one. So once you have your items set up, then we can start to combine all of our ingredients together and start mixing. All right, so let's get to mixing. So already in my wet measuring cup, I have a quarter cup, that's one slash four, a quarter cup of water. And that's gonna go in your bowl first. Next, we are going to measure a quarter cup of salt. Get my little salt here. So you wanna fill up your quarter cup with salt. And we will add this to our water. Next, we need a half a cup of flour. spoon that lives with my flour. So that's about a half a cup. Put that off to the side. We're going to sprinkle this into our container. We're going to grab our handy dandy spatula. We are going to start to mix all of our ingredients together. Now, it's probably gonna look a little soupy first, and then a little crumbly, but once all the ingredients get saturated from the water, it will start to form a dough. Ooh, you see that? Starting to form our dough. So I'm kind of pushing the spatula against the dough, and I'm scraping the sides. almost time for me to use my hands to knead the dough. So kneading, that is the process of squishing with our hands until we get a good consistency on our dough. Get all the little bits. So I'm, I'm squishing and folding squishing and folding. Now, my dough is a little wet. So what you do, if your dough is a little wet, you want to add a little bit of flour. So that's just sprinkle a little bit of flour because you can always add more later. So 
So I think that I need a little bit more flour and I can get it from my bowl. Put my bowl to the side and now I'm kind of pushing the clay around till I get a good consistency. It's still a little sticky. Now, if you're having the opposite problem, if your clay is too dry and it's starting to crack, you wanna add just a little bit of water. Really don't wanna go crazy with the water. When you add your water, you want to just stick your finger in and touch your clay. You wanna do this a little bit at a time because you can go overboard. My clay feels really nice right now. If you've ever made cookies, this is very similar to making sugar cookies during the holiday. So I'm just moving the clay around until I feel no more lumps and everything is kneaded together. Everything looks very nice, not too sticky, not sticking to my hands too much. If you have gloves at home, you can wear them, but I prefer not to. So that is combining all of our ingredients to make our dough. So we're gonna start splitting up our dough to create some different colors. So I'll be back. So now we're gonna talk about dyeing or coloring our different pieces of salt dough that we created. So if you don't want to dye your dough, you can fast forward to the next part uh, where I'm combining everything and making the plaque. So, if you want to use food coloring, it is messy. I'm gonna put your dough into a log shape and you want to cut it about in half. And then we want to take the one half and put that back in your bag to save for later. You can put extra dough in the fridge. I would put a label on it because this dough does not taste good. There is so much salt. Think about the ingredients that we used. Salt, flour, and water. Ugh, that doesn't taste very good. So now we have our half piece. So we need to cut this piece into thirds. So I put little marks and I cut my pieces. Now I'm already noticing that I made this end part too big and I made this one too small. So you can just take pieces off and put them into other pieces to make three even balls. Okay, so I'm gonna start by pressing my dough, have two little fingerprints. I'm gonna grab my yellow food coloring first and I'm gonna put one dot in one finger hole and one dot in the other. Now we're going to close our clay around the color to hopefully not have a huge mess. But this is clay and you will get messy. So you can start to see a little bit here as I'm stretching and folding, the color is starting to come through. This is where your towel is gonna be in, come in handy. Now, if you're using food coloring, you're adding extra moisture to your clay. So you might need to sprinkle your clay a little bit with some flour, because it can get a little too wet. So right now, we kind of have a tie-dye marble effect going on. So that means the color is not completely incorporated yet, but we're getting there. It's very sticky still. I'm gonna keep adding some flour. So 
So this is my yellow. Feels very nice, nice color. And I don't see any kinds of tie-dye streaks in there. So that means the color is completely incorporated into our dough. So the next one I'm going to do, try and wipe my hands a little bit. The next one I'm gonna do is going to be red. Now I'm going to press my clay. So I have two little divots, grab my red food coloring and I'm gonna put one dot and two dots. Now you don't want to add these too, too much too soon because it could make it too wet. All right, so we close our color into the clay and we start to fold. Whoop, there it is breaking through. Oh man. Oh, so messy, but I like it so great. So you can really see the colors start to come through on my hands too and it's starting to stick a little bit more because of that extra moisture we added. So I'm gonna keep stretching and folding and once you get the color incorporated you can go back and forth with your hands. Now something very interesting is happening. It's kind of marbleized but it's not a very dark red. It's seems more like pink. So that's because our dough is white. And when you add white to a color, you get a tint. And it's a different value of red. So if you like this color, you can keep it. If you want it to be a little darker, you can add one more dot, which is what I'm going to do only one. Close her up. And knead it together. We start seeing a little bit of the color coming through. I like this color a lot better. All right, so now we've got our red. Beautiful. All right, and the last color we need to do, we're going to press our two fingers in, so there's two divots. I'm going to grab our blue. I'm gonna put one dot and two dot. Close up our clay and start to squish and fold. Uh-oh, that's okay. If you don't end up with colorful hands at the end of this, you are doing something wrong. So right now my fingers are very tie-dye and that's all right. So it's kind of streaky, again, kind of getting sticky. So get my little bowl, put some flour on my hands and on my clay a little bit. Wow, it's a very pretty blue. So you can still see there's some streaks happening. So I'm gonna keep pulling and folding over until I get exactly the color that I want. And I think I'm gonna add one more dot of blue to make it a little more vibrant, a little darker. Because again, we have white clay. We need to add more color, more pigment to our clay in order for it to get brighter. Boop. 
This is just so much fun. I love watching clay and colors work together. All right, so now that we've got the colors that we want, I wanna talk a little bit about the color wheel. So the color wheel is the way that we organize our colors. And these are our primary colors. Primary colors are the first colors. And those are red, yellow, and blue. Let's get them in color order. Great. So now, Using these three colors, we can make every other color of the rainbow, and I'm gonna show you. So, first color we're gonna make is orange. So by combining a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow, we're going to be creating orange. So I'm gonna take a pinch of yellow, about, peanut shape and then I'm going to push them together and squish them and fold them until a new color emerges. If you like this tie-dye look you can totally keep it that way. If that's how you want to design your plaque. If you don't and you keep going you get really pretty version of orange. Now if it's if your orange is too yellow, add a little bit of red. If it's too red, add a little bit of yellow. I think this is a little bit too yellow, so I'm going to add a little bit more red. All right. That's looking fantastic. So I'm going to put that in between uh, yellow and red because that's how we mix them together. So now for this one, I'm going to grab a little bit of yellow and a little bit of blue. And you guessed it, we are going to push them together and see what happens. Pressing and folding and squishing. Wow, what a pretty color green. So this is our next secondary color. Now the only combination that we haven't tried yet is red and blue. So let's try. I'm gonna grab a little bit of red and a little bit of blue. Smush them together. Smush and fold and smush and fold. And this will create a very nice shade of purple. Wow. So there we have it. We have all of our colors of the rainbow. So in the next section, we're gonna be putting all of these things together. All right, so here we are at the creation part. So here is a plaque that I did earlier. Now, if you want your project to dry a little bit faster, you can put your completed wet project in a 200 degree oven for 15 to 30 minutes and as you can see my the back of my project is still a little damp because it's going to take about 24 hours for the project to completely dry you can completely dry it out in the oven that's just to speed up the process if you have time to let this sit out i would prefer that you do it that way So first I wanna talk about some textures. 
So I have a junk drawer here at my house. And in that junk drawer, I have really some odds and ends. I mean, I have some rubber bands. I have a handy dandy stapler. Uh, I have a little scrapey scraper. And some tape. And, oh, I have a screwdriver. And a pair of scissors. And uh, a whole bunch of markers. And a, and a Sharpie highlighter. Great. So all of these can make different textures. So I'd like you to go and rummage through a drawer. Could be your utensil drawer too. So a lot of items can make different textures. So first we're going to explore some textures. So we're just gonna press our clay out that we didn't dye. And we're gonna try out some different textures. So this is the back of a Sharpie, makes that kind of texture. This ring can make this kind of texture. Um, oh, this highlighter top, let's see. That's the top of it, but let's see what the bottom does. Oh, that's a really cool one. Oh, I might use that one. And then we've got, oh, a pencil, boop, boop, boop also use it as a roller toothbrush could add those dots could also press the bristles in and make that kind of texture could take my skewer and use that as a dotter and if I press lightly I get these if I press hard I get deeper holes Fork can make a poke texture, but it also can make lines that you can crisscross. That's what I used for the background of this one. So please go look at your cabinets, go through your cabinets and see what kind of textures you wanna use. textures are all around us. You could even take a stick from outside. So now that you know what all of these do, we're going to roll this back up. We're going to get started on the creation of your letter. Now I'm going to be creating a letter M for Mercs. So this is the dough that I used that I put away in a plastic bag. Um, so I'm gonna flatten this out and I'm pressing all around with the same amount of pressure to make kind of like a really big cookie. And I didn't, oh no. All right, I'm gonna have to do that again because I forgot to flower my surface. Let's try that again. So we're gonna press our clay out to a round shape. And hopefully it doesn't stick this time. Nice, okay. Definitely stuck a little bit, that's all right. So uh, you can decide what your background shape could be. You wanna make it a square and put your initial in there, great. If you want it to be a triangle, you can do that as well. Circle, or if you wanna leave it just this funky shape. I'm going to actually create kind of like a shield shape. So I'm flowering my surface a little bit more because I'm noticing that there's some more sticking happening. We don't want our project to stick on stuff after we worked so hard in creating it. So what I'm gonna do is with a pencil or a stick, I'm going to make a mark for where I want this to go. And I wanna make it like a shield shape. Okay, now I'm gonna grab my plastic knife and I'm going to cut cut, cut, 
you'll notice that it's pretty easy to cut this out. Don't need too much pressure. Don't need too much back and forth. Put that in my scrap pile. So I made mine a shield shape. If you want to do a simpler shape, you totally can. Just make it a square if you want. Beautiful. Cut that little tail off. So at this point, you can clean up your little rough edges. Kind of tap and push. So uh, you all know, or should know, that my favorite color is green. So what I'm gonna do is grab my little ball of green. I've noticed that this got a little dried out since I was touching it. That's what happens to our clay. It gets dried out if you leave it out for too long. So I'm gonna just dip a finger, one finger, and tap my project, my clay. And I'm going to incorporate that little bit of wetness back into the clay and now it feels a whole lot better oh my goodness okay so I'm going to roll this into oh before I do this I should figure out where my M is gonna go cover it up with something else. So background texture, completely forgot. So I'm gonna use my fork to create a background texture before I put my letter down. You can put whatever texture you want for the background. So now, I'm going to roll my green. You can pick whatever color you want for yours. So I'm not pressing very hard. And what I'm doing is I'm pulling my fingers out a little bit as I'm rolling and that makes it a skinnier snake. So I'm gonna cut the end off of that. And I think I want my beginning of my M to be about, yeah, that's about right. If you don't like it, you pinch off another little piece. So, whoops. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my finger and put just a little bit of water on one side of my snake. This will help the clay to stick to itself. Yeah. You can press it down a little bit. You don't want to press it down all the way because you don't want to get rid of your coil shape. Okay. So now I'm just going to actually measure where the M ended on my one side again. Take a little bit of water and I'm going to put that on one side. I'm going to place it onto my shield shape. So now I have to get tinier pieces. So break it off with your finger. So I'm going to make tinier pieces like this and like this. So I'll go back, I'll take those pieces off. And just a little bit of water.
have our letter. Now, the fun thing about having the clay colors is you can use the other colors to do some more decorating. So you could make flowers or hearts or stars or little circles. It's really up to you. So I'm also going to add, I really liked this texture, so I'm gonna add that star there star there maybe one down here and then I'm gonna add a little dot in the center oh I like that okay so my second favorite color it's purple I'm gonna have to add a little bit more water to this one because it definitely dried out a lot You can also make things off to the side and attach them later. I'm just going to have little tiny balls of clay. I'm going to squish them. I'm going to stick them right onto my project. like that. So I hold it, roll it into a ball, flattened it out a little bit, add some water, and I want this one to go on the other side because I want it to kind of be symmetrical. We can add, let's add some yellow in there. colors on top of each other. You can build textures and patterns on top of each other. It's really completely up to you. Ribbits. Beautiful. All right. So I'm actually happy with how this looks, and I'm going to let it dry. Once this one's dry, I'm going to paint this one. Any clay that you have left over can go into a plastic bag. Remember to write salt dough on it so nobody eats it. And you can make whatever you want out of all the rest of this. And if you have another creative idea that you would like to explore with working with this clay, you can. Well, thank you guys so much for participating in this salt dough adventure. 
you have any dough left over, please check out my bonus video on how to create this really cool, colorful bowl using another bowl that you might have in your cabinet. Don't forget to take a picture of your final project and post it to Google Classroom. And I will see you on the next art video. Bye guys. Thank you.